Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to the BrightSquid user group on our new secure online forums. We're going to talk about some of these facts that you see up on your screen now. So we'll talk about how clinics are spending hours entering form data, um, talk about this, the mistakes that, that we can avoid, hopefully, um, and, and how we can do that by getting off of paper. So if you're using paper forms, uh, please stay tuned. If not, um, you know, stay tuned anyway, because uh, it's a great way to use your secure mail account with patients in new ways. First, before we launch, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Jeff McKay. Um, and with me is Mark. Mark, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for asking. I'm going to launch a couple of quick questions. Just to get a sense of the room. And we talk to clinics every day. We ask about what they're doing. And we do get some we have some numbers and some of them are in this presentation. So we'll, we'll find out how we sit in this room. We've got a lot of people online today, so it's great. I'll share the results just so you can get a sense. About 10, 20 percent. Some some organizations, obviously, depending on the type of clinic you are, you're going to have more of your appointments or you're filling out a form. So the top one here, 50 percent or more of appointments. Um, so you'll see as we go through that changes some of the numbers that we have. So you'll you'll want to take into consideration your own clinic and kind of try and do the math on on that end for yourself. Uh, one more question: How many different forms does your clinic use with patients? Do you have one form you use all the time? Is it just patient onboarding? Do you have a few different ones that you ask periodically for patients? So five plus forms, lots of different forms that uh, clinics are using. So that's good to know. Um, we talk about the forms processes, and when we talk to clinics, there's four different ways forms are kind of used and entered into the the patient record. Um, depending on how you are, who you are, <laughs> uh, how your setup is, what sort of software you're using in your clinic. <clears throat> a lot of clinics are still typing paper form responses into the patient record, uh, and it breaks out in, into about quarters. Uh, we're scanning form responses into the patient record to be PDFs in there, or uh, we have an online form submission process that um, that's coming back directly into the patient record. Lastly, and sort of the least common, is save an attachment from online form submission. So we get that back, that PDF, and we put that into the patient record. We'll talk about supporting operations management. When we surveyed clinic managers late last year in 2022, they said that administrative operations management was number one priority in terms of what needed to be done as well as where we spend most of our time. So we always want to look for ways to create efficiencies in the processes. How do we take less time to do our job? How do we spend less money to do our job so that we can really be a streamlined and efficient practice? Um, if we look at the math here, and again, these are rough numbers based on some of our analysis and discussions with clinics, uh, is that on average, and this is a pretty good average across healthcare, now there's variation in terms of if you're a dental clinic or a medical clinic or a, a different healthcare, a chiropractic clinic perhaps, um, clinics are seeing about 725 patients a month, which is about 180 a week or 36-ish uh, a day. So uh, take that into consideration. Point with forms, some clinics we talked to, we came at about 10% of appointments. So, you know, again, look at your answers to the poll questions we had up and think about how this applies to you. So it, if it's more than 10%, then obviously these numbers can be a lot higher. So this is quite conservative here. Uh, we're looking at about, if you're typing it in, considering two minutes per form, you know, think about how fast you type, <laughs> reliably reading the patient information that they scribble down trying to get into their appointment on time. Uh, about two and a half hours a month, um, versus scanning is about 40 minutes a month. If you think 20% of your appointments have forms, you can double these numbers. Uh, the cost of paper forms, this is really looking at the cost of the actual sheets of paper and the printing um, and that sort of thing, as well as the number of pages per form, that kind of stuff. So these are conservative numbers, but this is all about looking at creating habits that address streamlined operations management. How do we make little tweaks in our clinic that we can help make things run a little smoother. If you can get half an hour a week or an hour a week back uh, for your staff to focus on patient outcomes, those real important things that we want to address, instead of typing out form responses, there's probably better ways for people to use their time. When we look at forms, there's a number of different considerations that are important. So compliance is a big one. If we're doing online forms, we have to make sure that the service we're using is accepted in Alberta and other jurisdictions. You need to submit a privacy impact assessment to the privacy commissioner, and they're going to do an analysis to say whether or not the services you're using are protecting patient information acceptably. 
there are things that you're going to have to consider around that like agreements you should always have agreements with any software company any organization that is managing patient information on your behalf so a form provider anybody who's doing appointment reminders all that kind of stuff you need to have an information manager agreement uh, in Alberta, for example, or under HIPAA in the United States, it would be a, a business associate agreement that says that this organization agrees to follow the rules in the same ways that your clinic has to follow the rules around protecting patient privacy, because otherwise uh, you can run into a lot of issues if, if they're not doing that. They're doing things like using the patient data you provide them with or they get access to for marketing purposes or things like that. You, you want to make sure that that's not happening. How how is this process? How is this service supporting the management of staff time? How accessible is it to patients from a from a usability standpoint? How are you supporting on time appointments? Um, getting people in the door so when they show up, maybe they're ready. We've already collected the information. It's one of the huge benefits of online forms. Uh, I am chronically late for things, and when I show up to appointments and they say, "Here's a clipboard with ten sheets of paper to fill out," um, I kind of panic. And I just want to get to my appointment because I've got things to do after that. And I don't have very good handwriting and it just gets worse. Uh, and I don't have as much time to think about my answers. So if you send forms out digitally in advance, patients typically take the time or have the time to think about their responses. If it's symptom related, they can ask somebody in their family, hey, how often do I have these migraines? Do I actually eat healthy? How many bags of popcorn am I eating a day? That kind of thing. We can think about that and provide thoughtful answers. Digital forms, when people are typing them in, we reduce typos. We have better legibility. So we go back to the slide at the beginning where we talked about the number of errors that arise in healthcare because of administrative mistakes. This is helping to cut that back. We're getting away from handwritten responses and translating into typing. Anytime you have to change something, from one format to another manually, you're introducing uh, risk of mistakes. As well, um, cost. So we saw a little bit of cost in there, but I think you know if we looked at some of the numbers from the responses earlier, that gets higher and higher uh, with differences in your clinic. And those numbers are related primarily to, let's say, like a single practitioner clinic. As well as storage, what do you do? So what are you doing with the forms? Do you have to print them off every day? Do you have a stack of them? Uh, how much paper are you using? How do you dispose of them after? Are you simply printing paper, just like when we fax things, so that it can be immediately shredded on both ends? So, so how much waste are we actually creating with our processes? Uh, diving in real quick, before we get to the demonstration, uh, Mark's going to take us through the process of what forms look like, uh, how to attach them, what the patient experience looks like, all that kind of stuff. These are the three forms that are in your account right now. You can select these and attach them to any secure mail message to a patient. We identified these based on our analysis of secure mail template usage. So when we go through and find the most common attachments in templates that people are uploading to have there when they launch a template for, as a message to compose a message every time, um, these are sort of these are the most common ones. They're, they're pretty obvious. COVID-19 screening. Uh, some of that's gone away. I know a lot of clinics are still doing that over the phone, so we can recap, recoup some of that time uh, and get that stuff in advance. Patient medical history obviously is a big one, so your onboarding forms when you're bringing in new patients, uh, we have that ready to go for you, and sending pictures. So that's another big one that people are doing. Hey, patient, you have this complaint about a rash on your elbow. Here's how. Here's the form that you can describe the issue and attach images to. So uh, we'll go through that and see what those actually look like and how they come back uh, in a minute here. So here's some of the things that Mark's gonna cover. All right, let me turn on screen sharing here. I'm really excited about this new feature that we launched a, a couple of weeks ago. We just kind of snuck it in there in a recent release. Um, the intention of the forms functionality, just to kind of repeat what Jeff was saying, is this makes it easier, faster, more convenient, less irritating to collect information from uh, from your patients. So I'm logged into my BrightSquid account right now. I'm in a demonstration environment. Most of you will have already seen this functionality where now when you click compose, we rearrange the user interface a little bit um, to make it a little bit easier to find the various features and functions. The main thing that we're talking about today is down here where we can select forms 
to send to a recipient. So, you know, just to repeat the obvious, this is intended for you as a healthcare provider to send a form to a patient, which that patient will then fill in digitally and send back to you. The advantage of, advantages of this feature are, well, there's a lot of them, but one of my, the best ones that I can articulate is on the, on our tech support call in line where we get calls from patients asking for assistance about how to use BrightSquid, one of the most common questions we get asked actually has nothing to do with BrightSquid. The most common question that my team gets asked is, my doctor sent me a form and I don't know what to do with it. Because clinics are sending forms to patients, they may be a PDF, they could be a fillable PDF or a non-fillable PDF, they could be a Word document, they, we don't know for sure. But some people that aren't very technically savvy now have to find their way to download a file open it up in a PDF editor or a Word document editor, fill in their questions and answers, and then save that file and send it back. And that's a bridge too far for some folks. So this functionality streamlines all of that into a simple clickety click, 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 and they click submit and it's all said and done. So let me show you how that actually works in practice. So I'll skip over the boring parts. I'm just gonna address this message to my patient, Adam. I'm just going to put test in the subject line and test in the body because what I really want to focus on is the forms that we're talking about. Now, as Jeff mentioned, we have three separate forms available in the current beta version that we launched a few weeks ago. These are all ready to use. You can send these to your patients right after this phone call. Um, I'm going to select them all just for demonstration purposes. And so we've got the COVID screening form, the patient medical history form, and send us a picture form, as we like to call it. Now I can preview these forms before I send them. Now the preview, of course, is just letting me see what my patient is going to see. I can't fill this in as the healthcare provider, um, but I can just review to make sure, oh yeah, this is the right form that I want. Just in case I have two forms with similar information, I may want to double check before I click send. Um, let's take a quick look. I'm going to skip to the bottom one here, send pictures, because it's shorter. Um, this one has instructions to your patient about how they can send photos back to you. Now, they could already do that with BrightSquid Secure Mail. Like I mentioned with the PDF and the Word document forms, that functionality already existed. Um, we've tried to streamline it to make it easier for patients and other recipients to manage and send stuff back. So in this form, they just fill in their name, and then at the bottom, they can browse their computer to find a file that they'd want to send back to you. Now, if the patient is working on a mobile device, like an iPhone, uh, a tablet, or an Android device, um, they can use the camera on those devices to take a photo. So, you know, dermatology is a, is a really obvious example here where maybe they have a bruise or a wound or a lesion. They can take a photo of that, and when they're ready, click Submit to send it back to you. Now, again, I'm still in preview mode, so I can't actually do that. So let's go through this process. So I'm going to send just this sample message. And just like with regular secure mail, like a regular secure mail message, the patient gets an email notification. The clinic has sent you a new message. Click here to log in and see it. And they're now going to be presented with this form that we would like them to complete and then submit it back to us. Now. Here's what that looks like when it comes back. And rest assured, I will jump over to the patient point of view in just a second to show you how that works as well. But here's an example of what is going to come back to your clinic after you send a form to a patient. So here's one that I sent to Adam here earlier this morning, and he has sent me back his patient medical history. Now, just like with any other document delivered through Secure Mail, obviously I can download it and save it to my computer. Um, and I can, of course, preview it here in the Secure Mail interface. So this is the medical history form. Adam's filled it in, so his name, his date of birth. I'll just scroll through this. I won't read every line on the screen. But you can see how he's filled in, very easy to read, all of the information that we need to um, add him to our roster of patients. Gone are the days where we're handing patients a clipboard and a dull pencil and asking them to fill in pages of information manually. All of this is now in a nice, tidy, easy to read PDF that I can download to my computer and then drag it into my EMR or whatever records management system is, is easiest for me to use. 
Um, as you can see, there's an opportunity here from to fill in, you know, type answers. Uh, you know, Jeff mentioned a really good example where if you ask someone a question about their healthcare and put them on the spot, they're going to forget things. Quick personal anecdote, I was filling in a form a few weeks ago to see my doctor and one of the questions was, have you had any recent surgery? And I put no on it. My wife looked over my shoulder and said, you had surgery three weeks ago. I'd forgotten. I'd healed, I suppose. Um, so anyway, helpful to uh, to review these documents when you're when you're filling them in. So, with all that, let me now switch my point of view over to that of the patient, and then we'll come back to the doctor's point of view here in just a minute. And so here's the patient's point of view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so before we started today, I sent the same welcome to our clinic message to our patient, and here's what it looks like from the patient's point of view. So the body of the message is less important. Most important down here is the form. And of course there's instructions in here on how to do it. And what we want the patient to do is click this big blue button, complete form. And then as with Adam that we saw a moment ago, I can now go through and fill in all of this information. Um, some of the fields are mandatory as a general rule of thumb. If there's a red star next to it, they'll have to fill that information in before they can click submit. Uh, and then they can fill in their information I'm not going to do this because it'll just take a long time to watch me type and that's not that interesting. Uh, but all of the questions we're asking for Adam to answer are available here. Uh, they can answer things in a drop down format. There's what we call radio buttons here where they can answer yes or no to certain things and the forms will expand. So I said yes, so I have to select a couple of these options. And then when I'm all done, I can click submit. Now, I won't be able to submit this form because I haven't completed it yet, but that's how this works from the patient's point of view. I think that's everything I really wanted to show from the patient's point of view. So I'm just going to close this. Oh, one more thing that I should mention is the patient can submit the form more than once. So a, a good example of where that would be helpful is something like a um, uh, for a nutritionist. If you want to collect from your patients uh, their diet history, what they've eaten this week, you could send them this form and they could fill in the same form and submit it back to you every week, every month, every couple of days, whatever's appropriate. Uh, they can return to here and they can complete the form and send it back to you. Any forms the patients do send back to you, they'll be able to view in their own sent messages folder and they can view exactly what was sent back so they can review the information and see when it was sent. Let's switch back to our doctor point of view or MOA as it were. And there's a couple other things that I wanted to point out. One of the most common questions is um, of the three forms that exist for us, these are all things that like Jeff said, we invented based upon what we saw happening with our template system. But of course, you're going to want your own custom forms. So we have this little request custom form option over here, or you can just send an email to support at brightsquid.com. And if you have a form that you would like developed so that you can use it in your clinic through this interface, we can do that. So you can have your own custom form. So there can be an ABC healthcare clinic health history form that only you would have access to. So these community forms, these three listed here are available to everyone, but your custom forms, if it's not, obvious would only be available to your clinic. Jeff, I thought that I'd be going a lot longer here. I'm just going to show this one other form. So before our meeting started today, I did a, I did the send photos form. And so I had my patient Fred send me some this form back. And that's what this one looks like. So Fred filled in the form, date of birth, and then here's two photos. Full disclosure, that's my hand. Uh, that's just how another form could look when they come back. And again, these are all customizable to, a, to quite an extent. So as Mark said, this is a beta version of forms. We have had some clinics use it, send it out, collect some data from their patients. It's free right now to use until the end of July. So get in there, test it out, try out the forms that we have. If you have specific forms, if the forms that are in there right now aren't what you really need, then as Mark said, reach out to us, go to the support team or click that link and say, hey, here's the form I'd like. We just need a PDF of that. And uh, we can work with you to get that built out so that it's online. It'll be available in that drop down menu where Mark was selecting the other forms there. So uh, the base price, that'll be about starting at about $100 just to get that. And then it's your form um, for as many times as you need it is the way that that's set up. So let's uh, get to questions here. The first question we have, Mark, is um, can I message multiple patients with a form? Oh, yes, you can. And that actually reminds me of a very important thing that I forgot to mention is templates. You can build a template and include a fillable form in that template. 
So if you did that, then yes, absolutely, you can address, actually even just a regular handwritten secure mail message can be written to multiple patients simultaneously. So you can just put more than one recipient in the address field or the to field as I like to call it, and each of your patients will receive their own unique message. Uh, they won't be aware of the other patients getting the same message. It's similar to the BCC or the blind carbon copy that uh, old fashioned email calls it. Um, but yeah, so yes, the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, send one message, address it to multiple recipients, and then you'll get back individual responses from each of those patients. So that's a, a great time saver, I think. Yeah, that's really good. And the, the concept of templates is a really good one in this case, because if you look at all of the forms that are in there right now, they're applicable to maybe multiple appointments that you have scheduled next week. Certainly the onboarding form, certainly the screening form or the photos, you can send them at a, in a template and the patient name will automatically get populated in there if you have your template set up to do that. So you can do that so that uh, it seems to be a direct message, but it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to retype out or resend the same message 20 times you send it once to 20 recipients. So that's a really good point, Mark. Uh, the next question we have is, can the custom form be generated back into our software system? So not directly just yet. So the form will come back to you as a secure mail message, which you'll then download and likely drag and drop that into your uh, EMR, which I think is what the question is alluding to. Is that right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I believe so. Yeah, I mean, we would love to. In that sense, the challenge is every patient record system has its own data rules, its own interface to connect with. So there's there's a lot of moving parts in there to get that with everyone. Um, but we're certainly looking into, as Mark said, getting started with some of those so that we can provide that option. As you saw early on, about 25% of clinics are doing that now that have that capability. So it's definitely something that we'd like to provide as well. Just w one last thing before we before we wrap everything up here. Just, um, you know, I, I think that what we've seen people using, clinics using Secure Mail for, for the last dozen or more years has been for eliciting information from patients. And they've been, we've been doing it in a way that's been pretty good. This I feel is a quantum leap forward if I can use such flowery language because it is such a tremendous time saver on both sides of the equation. As a healthcare provider, you can now easily and quickly send the request to the patient, but really the you know a lot of the time saving is for that patient on the other end who now can just fill it in automatically on their uh, computer, on their mobile device without having to manage what do I do with a PDF? Where do I get PDF software from? How do I work with a Word document? And then, oh my goodness, I saved it, now I can't find it to send it back. Eliminating all of that hair pulling that I know some patients uh, are encountering is going to be something that's going to make everyone a lot happier. So I, I can't wait to see how this gets adopted and, and how we can make custom forms to make it better for every clinic um, on their own levels. Yeah, that's a great point, Mark. Thank you. And you, you talk to and your team talks to the patients every day who call in with questions about how do I fill out this form? And in a professional setting, most of the users of Secure Mail are accessing it on a computer, a desktop or a laptop. Most of patients on the other side of things are accessing it on their phone. Uh, yeah. So that that gets tough when someone's sending a patient a PDF for them to fill out or even Sometimes clinic as a workaround for forms are pasting the questions into a message and patients fill them out in line. That's okay. Uh, it's, you know, it's easy to copy and paste those back in, but it's not as structured as a form could be. So this makes everything much more standardized. You don't have to worry about what's happening on the other end. Is the patient going to print it out? And then you're going to get a picture of a hand filled out form to try and figure out, or are they going to have trouble filling in the PDF? based on the device they're using, that kind of thing. This makes it way simpler for you, you and your clinic to send out forms and collect that information in advance of patient appointments. So uh, that brings us to the end here. We do have one person here who agreed with you, Mark, absolutely a quantum leap. So uh, <laughs> <you guys laughs> fantastic. That really good. yeah, so thank you so much, Mark, for, for taking us through that today. And thanks everybody for tuning in. You have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone, good day.